Hey, welcome back to the bench. Good to see you all again. Hope you're all well. Thanks for joining the channel. Today on the bench, I'm going to do something a little different other than doing typical receivers, amplifiers, cassette decks, turntables. This is uh, something the wife found for me. Um, now, this is a, an unusual one too. Um, this was found at a church rummage sale and it was thrown into the free pile because it had a little flaw. Somebody thought it wasn't worth trying to ask money for. So they threw it into the three free pile. The wife said, hey, go have a look at this. I walked over, took a look at it, and it came home with me. This is an AWA. Let's see if I can get this open. AWA, portable reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder player. Um, it's beautiful condition. Now, it, uh, it came with this tag fell off. I actually saved it, but it says executive solid state on there. That's the tag for the front. And I do believe this is exec executive because the build quality in this is phenomenal. The more I look at it, the more I'm just in awe here. Um, like I said, the fit and finish of all the, the, um, the buttons, the knobs, the plastics, everything looks 100% and it looks top quality. Um, this isn't your usual cheap Japanese tape recorder. This is this was built uh, up to a specification, and it is for the executive. Uh, for you know, come imagine a power move if you came into a meeting and plopped this thing down the table and started recording. But it has problems, not really condition problems, but more a uh, few other things like age related. Uh, let's see here. You see the lid has the foam is completely crumbling to dust, these foam pads, and that's for holding down the tape reels. It didn't come with a tape reel, but uh, you get powder all over everything. It doesn't come with a tape reel, but I have reels here. It looks like it'll accept a seven inch reel, which should be good. Um, this mechanism for locking and closing the lid is missing a couple screws and this plate came off so we can reattach that and fix that. Uh, aside from that, it looks like perfect condition. Uh, let's have a good close look at this. So looking at the inside cover, it has a caution, high voltage inside, do not open tape deck during AC operation. This fully is, unit is fully transistorized and does not contain tube or use the serviceable components. So that there dates this pretty early to probably mid 60s, late 60s, I'm guessing. Uh, when they start referencing tubes, people were in the, the habit of, uh, if it didn't work, they wanted to replace tubes right away. That's not how it works. On, uh, this. So it's a, it's a multi-power unit where it runs from 110 to 120 or 220 to 240. Consumes 5 watts. So this is a uh, world, you can use this anywhere in the world. Or you can fill it up with dry cells, 8 D cells, and it runs off 12 volts. Or a car battery, 12 volts. 10 to 15 volts. So it's pretty versatile. They made it so that you could use it probably anywhere in the world. We've got our uh, take up and supply reel. This thing has a switch for tracks one and four or three and two switchable. I don't know if it, uh, this cover comes off and it has a model number on there. You can see that it says TP724. I guess that's the model number for this thing. Has, let me take this lid off. The lid is detachable. Okay, so. Very basic setup here. It has a uh, guide post, erase head, record playback head, and then your pinch roller and capstan. The pinch roller looks Looks okay. Now, for multi-speed use, you take this little roller here, remove it, and put it on here. It should fit on there, but it, maybe it's a little damaged, so I'll leave that alone for now. There's also a speed switch here, inch and seven eighths, three and three quarters, seven and a half, or uh, 
19 centimeters per inch per second and that is uh, switchable here's a tape counter here resettable automatic volume control here's a level meter battery which doubles as a battery level meter uh, record light I'm assuming here's our mode uh, selectors you got play stop fast forward rewind and record You've got some unusual marking on there for record it's got the stop sign there and then pretty good this is the one thing that really impressed me is it has these solid metal knobs these aren't plastic they're huge and they're heavy and they're it looks like they're chrome plated brushed chrome here's a look at the connections we have an external speaker auxiliary microphone input and remote for the mic this uh, probably switches the motor on and off for uh, pausing it while you're recording on the back of the unit we have a battery compartment with a lock so unlock this take the, the cover off it has a door it has a uh, battery connector and it has a big holder for 8D cells so you're gonna get your 12 volts out of that for sure and this thing just snaps on this cover and then this plugs in here like that and then you put it all back together and then you're portable I wonder if it goes like this that back together it's nothing cheap about this thing it's built really well uh, we have a DC input barrel jack 12 volts it's written here doesn't tell you if it's positive or negative tip so according to this tag this is set up for AC 110 volts 120 volts 50 60 cycles or it can do 12 volt car battery or it can do 12 volts with uh, eight D cells. Three-way AC battery car operation. Use eight pieces of original, originally, use eight pieces of ordinarily flashlight cells. Be, care, be connected directly to 12 volt car battery with optional cord. May charge, change operating voltage to AC 220, 60 hertz current. Okay, so it is switchable. And here's our switch for selecting between the two and I believe I can see a little way to switch that over so that's working on this side we have a storage compartment that's lockable so let's open this up and when I pull out nice vinyl bag that's been stamped with Japan it doesn't have any name brands on it though it's kind of disappointing so what is all in here okay we got a microphone stand pretty cool it's not very cheap what else we got in here i have a feeling we have a power cord uh, yes we do a power cord so there's our 110 volt power cord it's quite long and that's it no microphone so the microphone's missing but that's okay all right before powering it up i just want to remove this cover and make sure we're not missing belts or parts I have a feeling everything's here it's just a matter of its condition we'll see if the motor seized or anything like that before we put power to it now it is a quite a heavy unit on itself because it's uh, all these die cast parts like this this metal ring that goes all the way around the outside of the attache case is, is all cast and it's heavy let me see if I can get this
we're still held down by this here, I think. Let me remove this. And that should free us up. Can get my fingernails under it. I don't have any fingernails. Okay, here we go. Here's our last screw. So yes, it has this big die cast frame for the structure of the tape deck and then it's got a, a chassis that's mounted to it. Pretty interesting. Let's have a look. Let me flip this around so we can get a better look at it. So we have power coming in here power transformer, a fuse, uh, a little bit of a power supply here. I can see four rectifiers down below there. Um, relay, I don't know what a relay is doing, a transistor, a germanium, some old electrolytic caps. This belt looks all right and these tires look all right. There's a little motor here for fast forward rewind depending on which way it engages. Mechanicals, this belt here has a twist in it. I don't think that's correct. Might have to investigate that further. Head assembly and our switch. The switch is just a little sticky. Goes down to, there's a audio board down here. You can see lots of transformers for the audio stages. It's old school design. I have a feeling this thing will work if I just turn it on. Okay, I haven't hooked up power yet, but I just want to go over the bit of the operation of this thing. So when I press fast forward, this wheel engages with this hub and it's driven by that motor. That motor flips up see the motor spinning it's got trash on it or something okay so let's just stop that let's go rewind same thing for this side this wheel comes into play this tire and this side of the motor comes up engages you can see that motor looks really rough I wonder what that is stop play so I press play the brakes come off you see the two brakes came down and these should be free wheeling now. This one here is driven by a idle or something back here. I don't know why that belt has a twist in it. It's kind of an unusual belt. It's a cloth belt and it has a rubber backing. And using the backing, the rubber backing as traction, the cloth for strength. It's kind of unique. It's probably why it's still alive today. And then when you stop it, the brakes come on, these two, and it keeps the keeps it from freewheeling. Okay. And record doesn't do anything different other than it probably switches up the amplifiers different. That's all that does. Alright, so capstan is here. Right here, and this belt is going around it. I believe there's a tire here. Maybe this is the reason why oh, it fell off. I shouldn't have played with that. Well, we'll get to that. So let's put some power to it. I'm just going to feed 12 volts into here. The large one is positive, the small one's negative, so we can get for our power supply. And that's current regulated supply, so it's and yeah, connect it up and it draws zero, which is expected. Okay, let's press fast forward. Of 
quite a noisy motor. Let's try that again. Our battery indicator goes up to the line. I think our amplifiers are off. Let's try rewind. Same thing. This thing's fully working. Let's try play. Okay, do I have a pause on or something? It's not running at all. I don't have amplifier. I didn't hear anything. Let me turn it up. Amplifier is working. Tone control. But we have no capstan action. So it will not pull the tape through because our capstan is not rolling. So that's our first fix, I guess. I'm glad that the amplifiers are working. Okay. I think I'm gonna to have to pull the bottom off. And to do that, I'm gonna to need to remove some screws here on both sides. Looks like it will remove the bottom for me. And uh, we'll go from there. Okay, look, getting how lots of problems getting into this thing. I can't seem to figure out the way in. Uh, this brown, beige, bone colored plastic piece, uh, there's no screws visible anywhere on the outside of this. And it's secured very well down to the frame. So obviously, there's some kind of connection here because I can't get the back off. I thought maybe this piece here that uh, runs down here. This has got the speaker grill in it and it looks like it snaps in place and I can't seem to find any way. It doesn't seem to pop out. And then I started looking down through the buttons here and everything and it doesn't seem to be any way in. Um, I was looking with a flashlight. I was looking down in here and there's all kinds of things like this switch for example is, is screwed directly to this plastic. So uh, I think there is some kind of a latch at the back here, one on each side. So to get that, I think I have to remove this wiring that's connected in the front here. Let me try that. Just remove some of these screws just to free up the, uh, the power inputs from the case. I just don't want to do any damage to the plastic on this. Is plastic is very brittle. So we'll get rid of all this stuff that's clinging on the back panel. Okay, so that should free me up. Oh, there's still one screw I didn't see. It was under the plate. Okay. That should free everything up. All right. Now I think this has to go. There we go. There's two latches on here. Just pull it back. Okay, let's see what we got. We got remnants of something here. Looks like dead bugs, but I think it's a belt with mold growing on it. You see that? We've got fungus on the belt, it looks like. So whatever was 
in there is all deteriorated to a bunch of crumbs. Let's flip the machine over. Have a look. Yeah, it's very early design and our belt is missing. Here's our amplifier, here's our power supply. Transformer, power inputs, and our one speaker. And yeah, the plastic is screwed down everywhere here, so I couldn't get it off even if I wanted to break it. So we need to get a belt on this thing. Some old caps, look at this. Old filter caps. I'm just uh, I'm just blown away by the construction of this thing. It just has this huge die cast frame and everything's hand wired, hand soldered. Let's go take a look at the power supply first. Be careful if we don't break any of these wires off. Maybe I should take some digital photos first where all these fine wires go because nothing's marked on the board and I have no manual. So let me get these screws out get my camera and we'll take some pictures because guaranteed every time you manipulate these boards uh, one or two of these wires will break off and then you're stuck with the dilemma of trying to figure out where it came from this this one's completely filled with glue and this will be our power supply it's got a little relay USB 56 transistor. A little transformer or coil or something. I don't know what that's all about. Look at this unusual cap. 40, 47, uh, 40, 470 nanofarads. And this thing? 0 0.0062. Very specific. And those trim pots are unusual. I've never seen those before. This in the frame so you can see it better. Nothing's marked on the board. We've got one old cap, it's a 33 microfarad, 16 volts, and it looks like Nip Nippon Chemcon. Let me and we got a 12 volt relay. Let me get some photos. Okay, so we got all the covers off, now what do we do? Well, I have a feeling we're gonna to need to disassemble these these bearings are probably all doesn't this motor definitely needs to be disassembled and lubricated. So it was very noisy. Um, the capacitors are testing fine, but I still want to replace them because I don't know how old they are. Um, Considering that's using germanium transistors, this thing's really dated, and those capacitors are working. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm gonna take them out. I think, I think that's the uh, if this is gonna have any success of working in the future, it's gonna need to have those caps replaced. Another motor here that's quite noisy is this fast forward reverse motor. I might take that out and, and service that motor. So we got two motors to service the capstan assembly. Um, Everything that rotates is going to get lubricated. Everything that slides is going to get lubricated. Uh, let's have a look at this side. Yeah, and this mechanism here, this with the belt, that's going to need to get disassembled and cleaned. The take up and supply reels will get lubricated. Uh, this belt seems fine. No, it's, in a, it's a round belt, so I'm going to leave that alone. These seem fine. They just need to be lubricated, I think. Anything that slides or rotates is going to get some oil or grease. And then we can actually play this thing see how it sounds. I have a feeling the chassis comes out as a unit. So we got one screw here, one under this cover, one screw here. And I'm looking for this screw on this side, but I don't see it. It might be under this board. 
I might have to lift this board up to get at the screw. And after I remove those four screws, this whole chassis should remove from the from the die cast, and then it'll allow me to service everything. All the wires will still be hooked up, but I can still probably flip it over, and I can service it. And then when I'm done, I can just flip it down again and uh, resecure it. Just going through and doing the recapping on the audio board and pulling caps off, replacing them, doing it one at a time. The problem is the board's not marked, so you have to be very, very critical of which way your positive and negative is. Um, another thing I noticed, this amplifier probably uses PNP transistors. And I can tell that just because all of the electrolytics have the positive tied to ground instead of the negative. Usually in a in a amplifier, you have a neg negative ground and the, all the capacitors are tied, the negative lead is tied to the ground and everything above that is positive potential. But on a PNP, everything's flipped upside down. And... Um, you have for your base zero potential, that's it's going to be your most positive, and then everything after that goes negative. So that's why they have the caps in backwards in the transistors or PMP. But this here's an example here's a, a four point or sorry, it's a 470 nanofarad electrolytic capacitor. It's a N, what is that, NTK brand? It's like a Japanese branded capacitor from probably from the early 70s or maybe even earlier and um, I'll connect it to the machine I'll show you what it says remember it's 470 so here we go connect positive and negative and look what we get it's almost three times the value and the ESR is on 200 ohms ESR is high yes we know that but the value itself shouldn't be that far out of spec so this is why we go through and we replace all these old caps. All right, so I had filmed a sequence where I replaced the two filter caps on the back, on the bottom, these two here, but it had no audio, so it's no good to me now, so you won't be able to see that. But finished with the electronics restoration of this, and I need to move on to the mechanicals. And I need to dive deep deeper into this because there's a lot of things I can't access right now. Like I want to be able to pull the capstan and flywheel out but there's this this belt that's tied in underneath the head assembly here and i tried uh, i wanted to remove this cover because there's mechanicals under here i need to address and so what i did is i removed eight screws four on each side there's four two here two here i don't want to flip it over right now because it's all going to fall apart and i was able to remove this cover now, this cover is still attached with um, the two, the switch, the another switch, a speaker, and all my input and output jacks here. So I'm not going to disconnect any of that. I'm just going to leave it and put it aside for now. Just have it hang off the side. And this should allow me to remove the head block assembly. So I removed three screws here. Let me take these screws out. We'll see how this works. These screws were glued in place. Oops. Fish it out later. And should allow this head block assembly to lift out. It's still attached to the capstan. There we go. So we have a bearing here on this surface and we can just lay that aside. Now I can remove the motor and I can remove this belt which will allow me to um, remove the capstan. I can service the bearings on that. I'm pretty sure these bearings are all dried up. I can see that they're not yeah they're not very good. Let's see if I can remove this belt. There we go. Now with this belt out of the way, I should be able to remove this flywheel. Um, okay, let's have a look at this. Anything we need to do to this thing? There's a big blob of corrosion or something here. 
What the hell is that? I'm not really sure. Some kind of brown stain. So from the looks of this, um, I can see inside the bearing, the bushing for this capstan. It looks all dirty and black. I'll clean that out. I'll remove the pinch roller and we'll lubricate this bearing and we'll clean the pinch roller. We'll lubricate this pivot point. Uh, this pivot point here is for the, uh, the brushes and I can see the head is filthy. So I might uh, I'll do some lubrication there and then I'll clean the switch. But for now, I want to get the capstan out so we can service that. So let's try. So now I have everything disconnected here. It's going to be difficult. Put this back for now. Put this back and then I can flip it over. Okay, got it flipped over. Just going to make sure you're not crushing anything. Just going to remove this capstan and flywheel assembly and we'll just clean the bearings and do all the service down below first. Okay. Remove this. You can see it's quite dirty. There's a little bearing in there and there's a little tiny piece of shaft protruding. It's got all kinds of black crap on it. Yeah, the uh, the lubrication in this is done for. It needs to be relubed. I'm really wondering why they put this little felt clutch pad on here. Maybe to stop the ringing? I'm not sure. Let's try to remove this. And there is a plastic washer on here, thrust washer. Make sure you don't lose that. Pulling's, pulley's intact. We got grease smeared all over this. So I'm gonna clean this all up. Clean this bearing surface, I think. No, that's all good. It's a matter of cleaning and relubricating. I got a lot of slide stuff going on here. Let's see, let me try and activate some of this. Seems like it's moving okay. I don't think I need to redo this. Grease is still good here. Here's a close up of the bottom bearing, the shaft. You can see it here. This part here is what's in the bearing. It's a very th small diameter compared to this. It's got a little micro ball on the end too. Because uh, in a normal position, that all the way to this flywheel is sitting on that little ball. And uh, that's got to be intact and in place. If it's missing, you're going to have to figure out a way to get that ball back there. I'll show it here. And here's the other side. Shaft looks not bad. It's pretty clean. We'll clean off all the old residue of grease. Okay, so I got the flywheel and capstan shaft cleaned. This is nice and clean. So is this. And I, there's a bunch of grease. I got rid of all that. And clean the V-groove. That's important too for the belt. A lot of trash came out of here, believe it or not. So I'm going to focus on this. Assembling it. This bearing, this top bearing for the flywheel. Let's give it a little shot of... There's a lot of dirt in here I saw. Let's see if we can get this. Yeah, it's pretty filthy. That bearing was not clean. It is now. Okay. Now I got on a, a whole number of other problems here. I got to lubricate these two spindles and they come off from the bottom. I have to remove a clip. These two idler tires, I have to remove the clips for those. I have to remove this clip to get this idler pulley. And um, yeah, there's a lot of details that I need to work on here. I need to get my um, snap ring pliers. Let me see if I can find them. This thing might not be able to get it. It's not a very strong tool. I guess they have a special special device for getting these things off 
You can also prime off too. Maybe I'll try that. Let's see if I can find a suitable prying device here. Here we go. Yeah, I think prying them off is the answer. We still have to get them on somehow after we're done. These are quite stiff springs on these clips. Just don't want to fly across the room. There we go. There we go. All right, so plastic washer. And we have our a little bit of a nick on there because it doesn't want to can feel a nick. It doesn't want to come off. These bearings are definitely dry. Yeah, there's a little bit of something here is scratching the bushing. I can't feel it though. What is this thing? That looks like cork or rubber. I'm not sure. All right, so clean that bushing, clean this bearing. We got a plastic washer down here. Clean all this, put it all back together, re-grease it. Do that same for the other wheel too. Okay, here we go. It's the slightest amount of cleaning fluid. This is. It's quite dirty. Clean this washer. Put it back. Yeah, it's pretty black. Centered bushing. It's clean now. Okay. This stuff will make it roll like a champ. You should put it back together and it should work great. Let's put a little bit on the shaft here too. Perfect. All right, so I'm pretty much finished with the lubrication. I did the two real motors, or the, sorry, not the motors, the two real spindles and the two real idlers. And I did the, um, the belt idler. That's all on the underside and I flipped the thing over. I wanna put this back together. Uh, so I put that in position. I need to figure out a belt for this thing before I bolt it up. So I mean, I'm just gonna use a chunk of wire and pretend belt here. I'm just going to use this as a measuring device. If I can get this around. Probably should have picked an easier string of wire, but... Okay, so if we get that about like that, and just cut it so I don't lose that measurement. Now we can measure this and we can see how long it is. I think it's like a 12 inch belt. Ah, it's 14. Okay. I don't know if I have a 14. I think my belts go up to 12. That might be a tricky one. We'll see what I have here for belts. Let's see if I can get something that fits. I still need to remove this motor. And to do that, I have to pull off this pulley because 
I won't be able to fit it through that hole. I could take off the three screws from the other side and bring the motor this way, but there's a thing protruding out the side of the motor which won't allow it to go through the hole. So I'm just going to remove these two screws and I will take the motor out through the top. But first I have a small set screw here. And this set screw needs to back off before it'll... It's a flathead. Oh, it's not tight. Okay, that's loose. Let me see if I can pry it up. Might need some heat. Should just pop up. There's a little bit of glue here. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll put a little heat to that. I can pop that out. I don't want to cook anything around here. Cooking the tape. Should be enough. It should be enough to just lift that right off. There we go. It's going to be hot. I don't want to touch it. Okay, take these two screws out, and the more should drop out to the bottom on the other side. Then we can service that motor. And then I'll hunt down a belt that'll fit 14 inch. Okay, just the luck I have one here. I actually I have a whole bunch of these, 14.2 inches. And these are uh, 93 thousandths square cut belt. Uh, so yeah, I hope this one's gonna work. If it's too loose, I'm gonna be hooped. I do have bigger belts. I have 15 and 16 inch. This thing is wonky. It might be too big, actually. We'll see. No, oh, that's going to work. I think that's going to work perfect. Okay. I'll uh, leave this belt in place. And then I can install the bearing and the cover. I'm going to start putting this thing back together. So here's the bushing or the bearing for the left reel. That would be the supply reel. Okay, so here I'm going to put this clip back on, but uh, where is my washer? Okay, here's the washer. Now this fits on here like so. Okay, and then we put this on, this clip, but I don't like that. I'd rather have a steel washer on there because this plastic washer is not very rugged. We got lots of room for one. Why don't we put a steel washer in there as well, back it up. So let's, uh, let's find one. Go in here somewhere. I think this one. Okay, you know what? Here, no. That's not gonna fit. Uh, I got brass ones here, but they're too big. How about this one? Is that steel? Yeah, I think that's a steel washer. Let's try this one. There we go. Perfect. Okay, let's put that one on. Okay, I'll press this one on. What I find works is just using a small nut driver and uh, just so it fits over the shaft. 
and then you can use it as a tool to press down on it. You gotta be careful, you put too much force, you're gonna start bending things and uh, you have to support it well from underneath so that you're not pressing down on something that's gonna snap, something plastic. Let's put this here. I'm gonna reach under and put my finger under there and I'm see if I can just press this on. I think I got it. Okay, perfect. I'll make sure that's not on too tight. If it is, I'll just lift it a little bit. Just lift it a little bit with a screwdriver just so that there's a little bit of um, axial play. All right, so let's go through and do a motor service on this. I removed it for ease and I removed the pulley. It wasn't glued on, it has a set screw. So we can put that back. And the glue they used was that circuit glue. So it's, they put it on everything. Every screw it seems to have it. Here's a part number for that motor. I don't know if it's gonna mean anything to anybody. Now, interestingly enough, we have four wires here. So this tells me we have some kind of crude feedback. We've got two wires for the motor itself and two wires for feedback. So, yeah, I, I was kind of wondering that when I first looked at the power supply board, there's some, there's four adjustable resistor pots. And I have a feeling that's one of them is for a speed adjustment. So let's, uh, might be interesting what we find inside this motor. It's quite, it's quite a large motor. It's bigger than it needs to be. So it's, Usually it's probably about that long, but this one's this much longer, so it's going to have some stuff inside it, I think. Let's see if these screws will come out. They're pretty fine. I need a finer. Ooh, and they're tight. They're glued in. There we go. I don't want to snap here. One and only screwdriver that fits in the slot, so you need to be careful. There we go. Okay, I don't know if this comes off now. It's just about. Take this one out some more. Tiny screws, very tiny. And our cap comes off. These three screws are not placed equally, so it only goes back on one way. All right, so I have a feeling I'm gonna to need to remove these four wires to get the motor out. Or I could just remove these two screws. I don't wanna do that. Now let's just remove the wires. I'll heat up my iron. Iron's still cold. Now I could, I should probably write down the order of these wires, but I think the video will be a good record of how they're gonna be connected. So let's just take these off. Come on, we need some more heat here or what? There's no connection, there we go. Okay. I should be able to pull this out. Okay, get rid of that. What is this? It's a rubber pad, I'll put that at the bottom of the And the cover. And then we cover up some kind of governor assembly here. This is really fancy looking stuff here. We have two governor weights and two sets of contacts. A set of brushes here. Okay, let's take this 
magnetic shield off. Let's take this rubber coating off. These motors were built to be serviced. They have, uh, you know, they completely disassemble them. But for my purposes, okay, so the black and yellow go into the motor. So those are your motor leads, I'm guessing. And these, white and red, are for this circuit. So we've got a speed governor here. Oops. Speed governor here, and we've got two, two weights and two sets of contacts. There's a contact here, a contact here, and can open the contacts there's a commutator here and a brush that supplies a circuit from this brass plate up through here to this commutator slip ring and goes to this switch Yes, I think it goes through this switch and then it goes to this bracket that holds the whole assembly through this switch and I think it comes out the top. So I think if we open either switch, these are in series. In case one gets stuck, I guess, I don't know. Now the way into this motor is remove these two but don't know if I want to do that. Let's see. They're locked with paint. I just want to see. I'm going to loosen them off and see if this end cap comes loose. It does. Okay. So let's mark our position. We'll have a peek inside. I don't think we need to do anything inside, but I'm just going to put a mark here. Just so that we know it's to line it up after. Okay, let's take... This one had a washer on it. kidding me okay that one had a washer one didn't let's push this all out Quite a magnet. Okay. You can inspect the brushes now. Now, if you have a motor with dead, dead flat spots, it's probably because of this wiring right here from the rotor. There's windings, and they are soldered to these tabs for the uh, commutator. Okay, let's clean this up, put it all back together because there's really nothing much, much more we can do here. So get some... I'm going to try contact cleaner.
getting a lot of crop out of here. Okay, I think that's going to be good. Let's clean the crap off those brushes and stuff. Do this slip ring as well. I have a feeling there's silver contacts here on the end on this uh, end uh, connection here as it spins. Okay, so got those cleaned. I'm going to clean this one inside here too because this one's filthy. Right here, there's a copper slip ring. Now, I guess it would make sense that it has to have some kind of speed regulation because the uh, the tape deck itself says it can run from different voltage sources. From D cells, a car battery from 10 to 15 volts. So you got such a wide range of voltages there. You got to have some kind of regulation. Otherwise, the speed would be all over the place with this motor. So let's put this back together. I think we have it. And all we need to do is lubricate this inside bearing here. And I think this looks filthy back here. There's a lot of crud on it can't get at it though and there's a brush in the way I'm gonna leave it okay let's go see if we can get some oil in here it's gonna use three and one today let's try it again with it this time you use a toothpick maybe I can get it in there with this got it that time here we got a plastic bushing or maybe two of them oh a whole stack of them okay Let me try cleaning this bearing with this stuff How much dirt came out? There's other crap in here too. Okay, that's good. Let's stack these back on the end. Should be enough. Let's put this back together. Okay line up our marks I'm 
Yeah, the one with the washer goes on this metal. Snug them down. Okay, let's test it. Let's give it, uh, well, let's give it, let's start it off with uh, six volts and we'll see how it runs. We'll get to black and yellow. I don't know which is positive, it doesn't think it matters. Okay. 39 milliamps. Let's increase this. Take it up to eight volts. Forty three milliamps. Take it up to ten. Forty eight milliamps. Got a lot of power here. Can't even install it. Goes up to 600 milliamps and burns my fingers. Let me turn this down a bit. Back to six. So I'm going to reverse these and see if it runs better. But No. Okay. I think this is done. I'm going to try and clean up some more of this oil that I made a mess with. Since these screws aren't very tight, I'm going to see if I can find something I can put on there to lock the th th those screws in place. Some kind of adhesive or paint or something. I used paint before. I just don't want one of these screws backing out while it's in use because they aren't torqued down very very much. And if I torque it down too much, I'll crush this plastic. And I think uh, I think that's good there. The motor's running nice and quiet now. All right, so we're ready to assemble. Put this back together here. Uh, we had this end cap. It just kind of sits there. And we had our magnetic shield. Okay. This might be tricky. That has rust on it too. Hung up. It's hung up on something. What's going on here? Here we go. Here we go.
Okay, I'll put those screws back in, put the cap on, reattach the wires, and then we'll, we're done. All right, so next up, the head block assembly. We got a lot to service here. We have uh, things to lubricate, heads to clean. Um, it's just a general mess here we got to clean up. So we're going to go work through this. So I already removed this clip here from this post. Same clip as this one. Uh, so it's now free. But we have a spring on this side. Let's remove this spring. Just want to pop it off the... Uh, there we go. Damage the end. And we can now remove this. And give it an inspection. Everything looks good here. Let's remove this clip. And just pry up on these. I'm not a big fan of these clips because when they go spraying, they go across the room. But you can manipulate them off and then you can push them back on. They're pretty tight. Use a screwdriver. Try a screwdriver. Just make sure your thumb's over it. And there it is. Put that clip aside. And we'll have to do something with this bearing. This bearing looks pretty dry. And then there's another plastic washer. Come on. It's gonna be one of these days, huh? Okay. So we can clean that. Yeah, that should be good. While we're here, let's clean the roller itself. Actually, I need to go wash my hands because they're all oily. So my go-to for rubber parts, tires, belts, rollers is isopropyl alcohol. It's my first go-to. If it doesn't work with isopropyl, I move to more harsher chemicals. But this is pretty good. It, you see the oxide coating on there, that brown coating. It, comes right off with alcohol. See that? It takes some little bit of elbow grease, but you can get it all down and clean with alcohol alone. Okay, so this is probably the third cotton swab with alcohol and we're finally starting to get it clean to the point where it's looking a lot better show you the surface here there's a really this is a really good condition this rubber actually sometimes when you get these machines and they're stuck in the play mode you'll get a big in, indentation across the face of the rubber like that and uh, it can be a big divot and that'll give you a little lump in the in the sound when uh, that roller goes over the capstan again and again and again so, yeah, this one's actually really nice. Really nice shape, good rubber. So that can be lubricated and put back on. This piece here, give this a good scrutiny. You want this post to be actually perfectly perpendicular to the base. And you, you, this doesn't, you want to make sure, check this base, make sure it's not bent or twisted or distorted in any way. It should be, these two posts should be parallel to each other in both directions if you look this way and if you look this way because you want that roller 
to be straight and true and everything looks good here this can get all put back together with lubrication okay so we cleaned that so let's give this a little bit of lubrication actually clean this little plastic washer we're going to put that back on a little thrust washer and we're going to give this a light coating of synthetic grease pretty good if this was sintered I would probably use oil but it's not sintered it's just a chunk of brass so I'm just using grease so that we uh, there very nice and then we'll put that clip back on and uh, call her a day if I can do this I might need to no I might I'm gonna have to do this off camera because I need to put this on something solid and press down and I'll do that uh, once uh, I got this machine out of my way all right back to this so this bearing here we cleaned and this is a sintered bearing so I would use oil to lubricate this bearing because it has a cap on here let's give it just one more clean just to make sure Yeah, it's looking good. It's actually pulling out some yellow, which means it's absorbing some of the oil that's in there. Okay, that's good. I'll leave that be. I should clean up a lot of this, though. This is looking disgusting. Look at that nastiness. Come on. Wow. It's just dust from the eons. Overall, the machine's pretty clean because it sits in a closed case and dust doesn't get into it. But there is a lot of dust here around the mechanism. It gets picked up from the tape and carried over onto the head assembly. We'll just clean all this crap out of here. Make it look pretty. There's a big wad of nastiness under here. Look at this. Gross. Side and in between everything get rid of all this lint and dirt yeah that's another thing this thing was this post was loose okay what am I missing here can't see everything from where I'm sitting That's a lot better. Okay. Let's remove this e-clip. This is staked here, which means we can't remove this pivot point. So we're going to have to do it here. Remove this E-clip. Okay. Now we can remove this. Is our I don't know if 
these are secured good enough. I hope they are. Let's have a look at the heads for the first time. There we go. You can see the heads are not really worn that much at all, but they are very dirty. So, let me get this spring out of here before I lose it. Here's a good look at the heads. Let me get a Q-tip with some alcohol, clean those. Okay. Get the trash on these things. Look at that. Almost looks like there's some corrosion on there that won't wipe off. The race head is clean and it sees the same tape that the playback head sees but the playback head is quite dirty. There's some stuff stuck to it. I don't know if that's corrosion or what. Let's clean this post. This post is quite worn. You can see the chrome is worn through and we're down to exposed uh, base metal brass. So we can we can fix that too. Let's just clean this for now. Okay. Let me get a different solvent here on that head and see what I can get off of it. Okay, this is just a uh, contact cleaner, so I'm going to try some of this. And not much is coming off. Okay, let me have a look at this thing. It's hard to say. It looks like it's got, yeah, it might be corrosion. This one looks good. It's actually really small amount of wear on this one. On both of them actually. So I wonder, let me see if I can get a little bit of a scrub pad on here and clean this. It's not where the tape path is. Yeah, it's just coming off with a scrub pad. I don't want to go crazy here because I don't want to damage the head surface. I'm just going to do a little light cleaning. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to leave that alone. It's not even on the tape path, so it's not going to affect anything. It just looks a little bit of corrosion. I wiped it off the top. But there's still some down below here. I'm just gonna leave it. Leave it, leave it, leave it. Okay. This piece here is filthy. And it's actually a little bit worn too. we're done our cleaning so let's do this setup here this was loose so I'm gonna assume it goes something like this I'm gonna snug this one down so it doesn't 
doesn't move anymore. This post here, we can loosen it. It's got a nut on the back side, so we can loosen it, give it a half turn or a quarter turn, and then retighten it. And that'll give us a fresh surface to wear on. Ooh, it's tight. Okay. And of course the nut is glued down, so I have to manipulate that nut. So let's give this a little bit of a turn as well. Okay. Some glue on here. Get that cleaned off. Snug this back down. Okay, so what we did there is we just moved the wear point from, he from here to here and we got fresh chrome to wear on now. Okay, that's done, that's done. Heads are clean on the deoxys switch. Switch looks. How do I deoxys switch? I'm gonna flip up this one side maybe. Just bend this up a little bit. And we're gonna get our deoxid in there. Okay. I'm using D100 concentrated so I'm put a little bit in on each there's two rows of contacts I'm gonna put one little drop on this side and one on this side and then we'll just let that work in down actually what I did is I screwed that up I have to retighten these there we go okay that's good now I think we're getting ready to reassemble here all right, let's uh, get our capstan roller back on, pinch roller. Let me uh, secure it with the clip first. All right, got that clip on there. Just pressed it on. And when you press it on with force, it's going to bottom right out. And then your your tire is not going to run a roll. Your roller is not going to want to roll. It's binding. So you take a little screwdriver and lift it up a little bit, just so there's a fraction of a millimeter clearance. And it's like new. Okay, so let's lubricate this hole here, this bearing. It's a pivot point. We can set this back together. Here. And then we can reattach our spring. That glue is really there. We go. Okay, and then I'll put this clip back on. Now these felt pads, you can uh, if they're if they're bound if they're bonded down good. 
I would just leave them alone if they're loose or ready to fall off. I'd pull them off and you re-glue them or you could find new material. This is just a felt pad. Uh, to clean these, it's not that terribly hard, I don't think. You just give it, what I do is I just saturate it with alcohol like that and then use something to manipulate it and give it a little scrub and then just use a cotton swab and s s soak up all the that will for the most part remove all the oxides from that top layer you can do this side too oops way too much just get absorb all this The alcohol will sort of work on getting it cleaned. I think that's good. It's going to work. Let's put this back together. Okay, this went on how? This was like this. Pull this back. Can't remember if this is upside down or not. Okay, I think that's correct. Otherwise, it would be this way, which is incorrect. We try fitting it this way. Yeah, that's incorrect. Now we had a spring in here too. How did this work? Uh, I wasn't paying attention. This one has glue on it, so it's obviously on the bottom and sticking out that way. This here is like this, I believe. Before I go too far, let's give this a little bit of a lubrication. Just a touch. And we'll put this on. I screwed up already. This has to be like this. I think that's it. Put our clip on. There we go. Okay. Good. I think we're ready to put this back together. So what we have here is we have our belt in place. This is our flywheel capstan. It's sitting in the it's sitting in the, 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 the bottom bearing and it's flopping around in the wind. Uh, our three posts that our head assembly will sit on is these three this post here is for the cover i believe so let's put this back i don't know which way these wires go i'm going to put them down like okay okay pretty good and get three screws. Put 
put them in loose for now. The last one. Okay. I think that's good. There, everything looks good. Snug these down. Now, the one thing I did do is I assembled that capstan bearing dry, so I have to add some oil here. So I'm gonna just let it go down the shaft. And then I'll clean up the excess so that it doesn't get on the roller. And that should be the end of that. I just wanna confirm if I have it in correctly, I'm gonna put it in play mode. Yeah, I think we got something wrong here. I don't think I got it synchronized. Let me turn this thing around. Okay, I've got this lever here is on the wrong side of another. You know, this pinch roller won't move properly, so I got it. I got it bound up, so I'm gonna have to remove a couple of these screws, loosen this one. Remove this one, and what I need to do is I need to lift this up. I gotta loosen this one some more. Actually, I have to loosen it right off. I need to lift this up until there, and then bring it back down. There we go. Now, if I press play, there, that's working. I'll put these screws back in. Next step, I'm gonna put the motor back and then we can power up and start doing our tests and alignment or, you know, adjustments, alignments, whatever you wanna call them. Okay, I'll confirm everything's working. All right, so I'm trying to get this thing to fit on, but it's just like it's not going on. And I do believe it's the right one. It's got a very tight fit. But uh, I was looking at this here with a lens and I can see, it looks like somebody grabbed the tip of this with a pair of pliers and chewed it all up. Maybe that's why it won't. If I can rotate this, I'm gonna have a look at the other side of it. Well, this side looks good as far as I can see. Where is it? A little bit of something there. Can't really feel it. So what are we gonna do? I got some uh, 600 grit here. I can just go and very, very lightly clean up that. See that feels smooth there, but then right here it's rough. Clean this up and see if we can get this adapter to fit. It's tight. I don't want to force it on because I'll never get it off. Ooh. Okay. Oops. I think there's some damage to the inside of this too. I can see a little bit of a, I'll see if I can get some sandpaper, roll it up and just give that a few wipes with sandpaper just to clean up all those burrs inside there and then we'll, maybe it'll work. 
Okay, I think I might have got it. I have a feeling this this is hollow here, so I think it, it was slightly crushed. It was whoever grabbed it with pliers, I think, might have uh, crushed it. It's no longer perfectly round, but it is fitting better. I don't know if this screws on here. It should. Yes, it does. Okay. There, it's on. And it's removable. It's not stuck on there. A little tight. It's quite tight. But it does come off. So I'm going to leave that. That's our speed select for the different speeds. You put a bigger diameter roller on the capstan and your tape speed goes faster. That's how that works. Okay, ready to put it back to get all together, but I had some problems here. Look at this foam that it's just disintegrated into mush. So I'm just going to clean off all this old foam and uh, put some new stuff on because the foam keeps the uh, meter face from pressed up against the, the front bezel. And it just turns into a gooey mess. Sticks to the fingers and everything. Look at this stuff. It's like tar. Clean this off too. I'll clean all this up and then we'll get back here. All right, so I'm just gonna use these foam strips, foam uh, foam tape, you get it at the hardware store. I can peel this, this stuff's hard to peel. This is quite a dense foam too. You can get uh, different densities of foam, different thicknesses, different widths. But uh, I'm going to try with this one right now, but just because it was in, it was in my reach, so we're going to go with it. Hard part is peeling these little paper things off. Side's a little wonky, let's cut it off. Make it look nice. All right, that should provide enough cushion. All right, okay, I'm now ready to assemble. Gotta make sure, just go through all the wiring, make sure everything's correct. I remember I, uh, I gotta fix this here. I, wired in the motor backwards, so I'll do that before I wrap this up. Uh, I was just cleaning the knobs, put those back on, I'll clean the pots too. Um, everything here, mechanical's done, except for this motor hasn't been oiled yet. I'll do, can do that from below. But uh, I think everything here is done, except for the two knobs, have to put back on. Now inspect your wiring, because a lot of these wires will break off from just from moving this around and flexing and sometimes it gets pulled on, but uh, it, uh, check your work over, make sure there's no broken wires before you stitch it all up. Okay. All right, so I think I got enough of this put together that we can run a test. I just wanna put some power to it and I have, put 12 volts on the power input. Let's hit rewind. Rewind's working. And lots of torque. Fast forward. And get some good torque there too. Okay, put in play mode. that noise. Mm. 
I'll figure out what that noise is. I think it's working. Let's turn up the volume. Everything's working. Sounds like there's something hitting the flywheel. Let me flip it over and listen again. Okay, so that noise stopped. It was just the belt. I think there's a little something that was sticky on the belt. It's working good now. So we have two tape speeds. That's the fast speed. Slow speed. Our battery meter says, says it's right up full. Okay, let's let's load a tape on and then we'll hear how it sounds. All right, we're loaded up and this is a recording taken uh, the Thunderbird Club of Lakeside, California. Now, don't ask me what year this is, but uh, somebody recorded the dance, the music from this Thunderbird Club. So let's just try this out and see what we got here. This is side one, I believe. You can hear something. Honey, and you need that too, and promenade that pretty little girl. Don't slow down. 
One and three, let's wheel around. You spin that top. Rock it up and back. All eight, circulate. Spin that top. Cross trail, hit old corner. Left foul and man, and you come back. One, promenade that pretty little girl. You take them back home, give them a swing. Get around, around that pretty little thing. Honor your partner, corners all gonna wave to the pretty girl. Cross the hall, let's give your sub a right. Big hand, you all. Very good. It's comparatively cool down here in California tonight for a change. Incidentally, where we Lakeside is near San Diego, if you're wondering where the little old town of Lakeside is, about 18 miles east of it. Um, also, would like to mention that your good friend Ian and Dorothy Craig are the instruments of bringing this tape to you. So we all hope you have a good time listening to it. Another Canadian who's supposed to be very well known up through there, Ernie Park, wrote the following square dance singing call and since we're sending this tape to Canada why shouldn't we honor the one of the nice callers we have up there perhaps very outstanding very good little dance he wrote anyway here we go with a little Mary Lou reminds me of watching the Beverly Hillbillies no it's working great I think it's uh, awesome uh, let me see what this head switch does I think we're able to switch between tracks one and three so let me try this It doesn't seem to make any difference. Let's uh, check out the other functions. Fast forward works great. See how it behaves when I stop it. Works good. Let's keep going. Try rewind. It's working good. All right, so I'll put the rest of this back together, put the covers on, put it back in the case, and do a wrap up. This is uh, pretty much done. Okay, one thing I want to do is I want to add a re uh, reverse protection diode on the power supply. Um, let me see here. Now this cable here, this light tan one, that is the battery connector. And that comes from the uh, D cells. I'm just gonna tack a diode across. Just to provide some protection for the uh, the circuit. Let me see if I can get this. Okay, I have to put that wire back on. There. Now that'll provide a little protection for this tape player, tape recorder. The barrel input, as far as I can tell, it goes up to the power board, but it goes into the bridge rectifier. There is a four diode bridge rectifier here. So I think we're okay with this, but we're not okay with the other connector, the input connector. Um, this one here, which is way off in left field. If I put reverse polarity on that, it would definitely zap everything in the circuitry. So I'm going to leave that like that and we'll close this up. Okay, so i got it all back together in the case. Now, you see this light is on now. That's because I have it plugged into the AC. So it's plugged into the AC. There's no power switch on this. And it's drawing uh, 2.3 watts from the power just sitting idle turned off and then when I turn it on it jumps to about eight or nine watts okay so it's a very low power consumption so what I want to do now is test the record function but it didn't come with the uh, dynamic microphone 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make one here. I have a dynamic microphone element and I'm just going to clip it on with some clip leads and then plug it in and try it out. Get rid of this. Okay. You're probably going to hear some hum. Uh, let's plug this into the mic input. All right, so time to start this thing up. Recording. I'm going to press both record and play at the same time. That didn't work. There we go. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. The meter is jumping with my voice, so it's appears to be working. So let's play back and test it out. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. The meter is jumping with my voice, so it appears to be working. So let's play back and test it out. So I gotta say for a 60s, build uh, quality on this thing is phenomenal. Uh, it sure puts Shon uh, Sony to shame with, uh, you know, just the design. It seems like it's really built up to a standard. And uh, looks good. Nice att attaché case type cover. very nice so I'm, I'm happy the way this one turned out all right so that's it for this one thanks a lot talk to you again later thanks for joining we'll see you in the next one